No. <laughs> now, there's a number, this, this is a numbering system. There's only five patterns of numbers in the entire world of fiction. And once you memorize these numbers, there's a, uh, an old rule maybe most of you are familiar with, Sherlock Holmes. Everyone know the name? Okay. Sherlock Holmes says, when you remove all the things that cannot be possible, what are left, however irrelevant you believe them to be, are the facts. The point is, when we apply this same philosophy to the world of fiction, we actually come up with the facts. So, what is an adverb? An adverb is a modifier. It modifies the condition of the speed of thinking. It's primarily designed to modify the verb in, in speech. The verb is the word thinking, or, or the word motion. And motion comes from thinking. So the adverb is a modifier of speed. Now, when you modify something, you change it from its origin. Well, if it's not origin, it's perjury. Simple as that. If it is not the fact and you changed it, that's perjury. I don't care what language you speak, I don't care what country you come from, eight billion people understand the word perjury. And so you've, you've told a lie because you've created an opinion. <clears throat> This one here, motion, or rather the adjective, we're going to deal this with color. Anybody want to define color? Explain to Helen Keller, who was born blind, what the color blue is, or color red, or yellow. You can't explain color to a blind person. Turn off all the lights. You see, black is the absence of energy. There is no such thing as a as a, uh, a negative. You can only have different degrees of energy in the, in, in the universe. There is no such thing as a negative. So the, take this room for instance. We've, we've got thousands of candle powers of fluorescent light and it's very bright in here. But let's go to midnight, turn all the lights off in here. It's so dark that you can't see the hand in front of your face. Or go into a cave underground and I was in a I was in a cave um, I have my little tiny fla LCD flashlight on my keychain and they turned off the lights for about a minute so everybody's eyes were fully dilated and I turned that little light on and for 300 feet down the cave you could see everything clear with just that one little LCD light or you take a, a, a football stadium it holds 70,000 people at midnight, no moon, absolutely black, so you can't see the hand in front of your face, and just light one candle, an entire stadium will be illuminated that you can see by one candle because you have black was just the absence of energy, but even the smallest spark of energy creates an illusion, will give you the reflected illusion that is necessary. So you can't prove a negativity the adjective, ADJ, means no contract because the IVE is contract. And the adjective is going to, color is an opinion. And an adjective cannot exist unless it is filed by a fact. Because the color has to be able to modify something. The word black pen, black is a fact. Pen is a fact. Black is an adjective. Is this a black pen, a carbon pen, an ebony pen, or a charcoal pen? All colors are black. I have a, a black jacket on, or it appears to be black, but actually when you put it against my black pants, it's actually a black blue. Just one hair off of black with a little bit of blue in it. So, but when I put the, the black against my shirt, it looks like a complete black and, white black and white combination, but when you put it against another shade of black, you're going like, well, there's some blue in this, just a little bit, but it isn't black. 
So there's 1,200 shades of, of each shade of color. And there's an infinite amount of colors, so how do you argue color? Even an individual, the pigmentation of your eye and its ability to see color and the amount of oxygen you have in your blood or how many red cells or how many white cells will affect the, the color of your blood that goes through your eye and affect the shade where one person will see burgundy and the other person will see bright red. Another person will see green or brown. My friend Lyndall is colorblind. I says, can I have that red pen? She, she says, I'm colorblind. I can see a brown pen. Is that the one you want? So she could only see brown. And I thought to myself, wow, a beautiful bouquet of flowers. Bucabalias, for instance. Beautiful purple flowers. She only sees as gray and white. You know, she can't appreciate all the colors in the world. And I, I said, what a handicap, you know. Uh, so the adjective must always appear in front of a noun but then, or a fact. But then when you put an adjective in front of a fact, it becomes a pronoun. Because this is modifying the fact. And now it's a no, no, no. P-R-O is no, N-O is no, and U-N is no. So pronoun has been modified into non-existence. The position is an alphabet, A-B-C. We're going to spell the pen using the alphabet. We're going to spell it P-E-N. We're going to give it a definition for the writing. Look, in any dictionary it says a pen is used for writing. It's used as a noun. However, I take, I take a pen and I hold it like this. I now have a stabbing instrument and I stab somebody with it. It's carrying a concealed weapon. It carries a 10-year prison sentence for carrying a concealed weapon and 10 years for assault with a, with a deadly weapon. Or I make a fist with it for as a stabbing tool. It's your volition. If I hold it like this, it's a tool for writing. So the simple way you conduct yourself while holding a pen or a pencil can get you thrown in jail for 10 years. So be careful what kind of jokes you want to play when you're in the presence of law enforcement and what your attitude is. If the government wants your farm, they can charge you with carrying a concealed weapon and throw you into a quandrum of an illusion gets you to sign off and turn over your farm to the government, which is a foreign vessel in dry dock, and all of a sudden you're sitting on the street going, what happened to me? I was writing a check for one minute, next thing I'm guilty of an assault, assault with a deadly weapon in a bank with a ballpoint pen. What kind of nonsense is this? See how easy it is? My buddy, he's an electrician, gets pulled over. Cop sees a piece of copper, one inch in diameter, with tape wrapped around the end of it. So I see you got a club in the car carrying a concealed weapon. He goes, no. And uh, he says, well, I'm going to charge you with carrying a concealed weapon because you have a club in your car. He says, I'm an electrician. I just got done wiring a 600 amp, 600 volt circuitry system. It runs a one inch wire. And that's the end that we put the tape around and connect our, our rope to it. And we pull it through the line. When we got it on the end, we just chop it off. And I'm taking it to the junkyard to scrap it out. Uh, I'm going to charge you with carrying a concealed weapon, $2,500 fine. And he goes to court, and they sue him for $2,500. And he calls me up, and I intervene, and he gets his refund back, and they drop all charges. Just because I said, can I see the correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, language for carrying a concealed weapon? Oh, doesn't exist. Well, then how can you charge somebody with something that doesn't exist? Give him his money back. By the way, it shut down Adams County for, six, for three months, that little sentence. Because the man who charged him $2,500, the real judge walks out of the courtroom. His brother-in-law is a plumber. He's in the hallway. And I followed the judge out. I'm just standing there, got my suit on, look like an attorney. And the, the judge goes to us, hey, put my robe on. Go in there and take 2500 bucks off this guy. And put him in jail for 30 days. So the brother-in-law, being a plumber, puts on his robe and walks in there and says, I'm the judge, give me $2,500. You're 30 days in jail. And the sheriff arrests the guy and puts him in jail. I make a call down to the chief judge at Federal District Court in, in Madison, Wisconsin, and I explain what just what happened. And they shut down the county. Half the people got fired that worked in the county when they found out nobody had an oath of office. None of the judges, none of the clerks, none of the police officers. I mean, it was a complete rout. 
don't think because they're, they're, they're public of officials that they're legal. There, there's, a, there's, a, uh, there's, a, there's a movie that just came out a couple of years ago at Demsall, Washington, where he's a, a drug dealer. When, <clears throat> when he blew the whistle back in the 60s, half, 60% of all the police officers in New York City and Manhattan Island were arrested as co-conspirators for drug dealing. Half, 60%. Huh? No, Serpico is a different one. A lot of people went down on that one also. But this is where a drug dealer turns state's evidence under the uh, False Claims Act. And uh, Compton, Compton is the second largest county in the United States next to Los Angeles County, was taken over by the Crips in the Bloods. When the FBI went in there and broke that up, 60% uh, uh, of all the people that worked in government, from judges, attorneys, police officers, clerks, uh, all went to prison, and Compton was under the, the jurisdiction of Los Angeles County for eight years before they were able to reform a government. Don't think it can't happen. Yes? So what can we do when we have a county sheriff that has a, you know, the, the oath that they've been using for years, the one that is on file currently is completely void of any... Send it to me in an email, I'll syntax it and send it back to you. In Hawaii, we have 92 judges. We syntax all 92 oaths. When, when the Hawaiian Kapunas walk into court, they hold up the oath and say, you have false misleading information, you're not a judge. We have the clerk's false misleading information. And then what they do next is they prick their finger and put blood on whatever document was brought them into court, saying we have, it's called cocoa. Hawaiian word for blood is cocoa. Well, co the, the paper is fraud. The language is fraud. The blood is human. Therefore, it's real. How does fraud and fact come together? Can't. Vacates to contract. Therefore, they don't have authorization. They don't have an oath. And the cases are vacated and the Hawaiians go home. That easy. So can we do that in court here? You can try it. You're not in a sovereign position like the Hawaiian people are because you are a postal employee but you did walk into a foreign vessel in dry dock under false pre pretenses. So it's, it's easier to take your, the paperwork that's generated by the state in fraud, if it exceeds $21, now it becomes a federal crime under false and misleading information. Uh, a lot of times, like uh, in March, I was in, in Honolulu and I sat in on Kearns Court there were 13 felony cases brought in facing five to $10,000 fines and two to 10 years in prison. The judge says, so your lucky day, ladies and gentlemen, as each one of the people were brought in. They all got $20 court costs in case were vacated in front of me. Nobody knew what happened, but the judge and I did. <laughs> Number 13 came in, fifth drunk, 44 year old man, five times drunk driver. Doing, he blew a 3.4. Legally, he should be dead. Cause a car accident for two people in a hospital. That's public safety violation. That, I, won't, I won't deal with public safety, first off. Judge says, well, it's your lucky day, sir. Uh, we're only gonna charge you how much? $2,000 today instead of 10, because it's your fifth offense. And instead of 10 years in jail, we're gonna give you three years in jail. Is that okay with you, sir? And he goes, oh, thank you, Judge. Uh, why are you being so generous? He says, well, it's just your lucky day today. DA goes, I object. Judge said objection noted. Write it up. He writes it up. DA takes it up, paperwork up to him. Here, sign it. Judge says, I ain't signing that. <laughs> so I held up my hand and I, I did this. And the judge says, okay, I'll sign it. And he took him away but I wasn't in the court. <laughs> I says, but I wasn't in the court. David, yes. I have, I have an oath of office here from a police officer. Could you just look at that real quick and see how, what you would say on that for syntax? <clears throat> I'll even put it up here on the board. It'll be a good lesson for everyone here. Meantime, you can ask me a few questions. How's that sound? Oath of office for that sheriff. 
Yeah. The oath of office like that is filed, but every blank, every line is completely blank, nothing written in, and that's a certified copy. We're just going to use this as the person's name. Okay, if it's more than double spaces, what you have is a. <clears throat> Uh, a, a, a group of pronouns that are on the paper. There's no legal sentence called grammar. Now this is a, we're going to use these dashes to represent character spaces. Well, you going to buy your groceries today with what kind of money? <clears throat> well, if you want to go, you can go ahead and barter. Postmaster General of the United States. Wouldn't it be better for you to run for Postmaster General than President? I appoint the Postmaster General, who would be my business partner, Russell, who is also a Postmaster General already. Yeah. So how do we vote for you in Parliament? I'm a write-in vote under the uh, under the uh, director party. Is that listed? You got to write it in. Yeah, write in the director also. Yep. Everybody's been given instructions on my website. Is it possible to do that on an electronic voting machine? Yep. Do you have to be registered in order to go in and vote? Yep. The Constitution of the United States no longer exists, so therefore it's irrelevant. State of Illinois is a verb. I'll just take that. All right. This is a I, comma, so this is a pronoun for. Having is a pronoun <clears throat> modified by the bin. Now we have three character spaces, which results in a zero here as a dead continuance. And then you have a pronoun appointed. AP means no point, and ED is in past time. So you have three violations on a word that should be used as a condition of state, now meaning nothing. Two is a adverb in future time. The is an adverb. Office means no contract as uh, a verb. I mean, this is an adjective. Now, the reason this becomes an adjective is because there's a two-character space break between police officer and the word of. So this is a one, three, four. And again, you, you have a break here, an officer, office, OF meaning no, is a volunteer consonant. 
Then in is an adverb. Rather, there's, there's a double space here again. So in becomes a pronoun, the is an adverb making city to be a verb, of is an adverb making wheat and to be an adjective of in, which is a pronoun, the is an adverb making county to be a verb, of is an adverb making DuPage, an adjective of aforesaid. Now aforesaid, af means no and F-O-R-E also means no. So we have a double no-no here of the word said, which says nothing. Do is a pronoun modified by the adverb solemnly, which then modifies the verb swear. Or, in the word affirm, which means no contract, as a pronoun, comma, that I will, that is an ad adverb, I mean, a, uh, yeah, that is a pronoun, I is an adverb, will is an adverb, support is a verb, the is an adverb, and then it was the uh, constitution of the U.S. So that would be a verb, an a, uh, the adjective, pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun, and united means no citizen. Where's my prepositional phrase, five, six, and seven? That's a $25 million fine and 30 years in prison. He's carrying a gun and a badge without authorization of an oath of office. That's 12 officers. Yeah, and that's exactly what you've got. And when I do this, just like when the marshals surrounded me in Honolulu, I said, you know, guys, I got a signed confession of all you guys. You all are facing 25 years in prison as organized crime running the government. They have to maintain a condition of zero. The word comes from the word alien, remember? Alien means corruption from the beginning. We killed the Indians, stole the land, sold it to an unsuspecting buyer. Simple as that. All right, because they were corrupt in the way they conducted themselves, took over this country, bastardized grammar for 8,500 years, they have to have one condition of contract. That contract must be in fiction at all times. You can never prosecute an individual for nothing. You can never prove nothing. You can do nothing wrong with nothing. So which part of no don't you understand, the N or the O? <laughs> and you know, when you look at this, for you to go ahead and say, all right, anybody feel like a pronoun today? I. Where's your condition of contract? For the I? Why isn't there a name here? What it should say is for the, the person's first name and second name with the punctuated words. With the knowledge of a contract. Not appointed. He has to sign a contract. I mean, why would he do the oath? He believes the oath is a contract. But here he's taken a position that he was appointed. Today, it's mandatory that anybody that's a county sheriff has a four-year college degree in criminology. 30, 40 years ago, it was anybody could say, okay, you're the sheriff, put on a uniform, put a badge on, carry a gun, hold up your hand, and that was it. Everybody heard of Judge Roy Breen, the hanging judge of New Mexico? He was played by, uh, they made a movie of him, and... Uh, uh, he was a drunken outlaw with seven uh, guys in his gang. And one day he uh, went to a bar and he found a law book in New Mexico. And he read it and he says, you know what? I'm going to get hung here pretty soon if I don't become a judge. And he made all of his outlaw buddies deputy sheriffs. And they went out and cleaned up New, uh, New Mexico and hung all the rest of the, all the, rest of the crooks. And he says, well, as a judge, you know, I can steal their loot. I don't have to rob a bank. I can just find their loot under the laws of booty, B-O-O-T-Y, and I can keep it all. So I can let them steal it, catch them, keep the money, and hang them. He hung 88 men, never had an oath of office, was never went to a law school, and never a judge. He was only a presumption of a judge. Because nobody could read and write, and there was nobody to challenge. But because he had his deputies, and he had the law book there, 
and he knew a few tricks as a result of that. He became what he became. What constitutes the fact of a judge or anybody that's an officer of the court? It's only your presumption. Don't forget, you've left Indiana. You've entered a foreign vessel in dry dock, and you speak babble. Everyone has a second-grade 